Hello and welcome to Switzer Investing Insights brought to you by NAB Trade. And today we want to get to the bottom of Westpac's capital raising. Paul? Yeah, Westpac's raising uh, $2.5 billion, Peter. And it's doing this really just to strengthen its balance sheet and importantly to make sure that it, it, it more than meets uh, APRA's sort of unquestionably strong benchmark. Now that mm -hmm. means, uh, if you haven't heard about that benchmark, is that all the major banks have to have a tier one capital ratio of at least 10.5%. Mm -hmm. Now Westpac's currently over that at 10.67, but there are some issues that it, that it They're confronts. kind of close. Kind of close. Mm -hmm. so one is obviously there's some changes around the, how the ratio is measured. There's some changes in New Zealand with the Reserve Bank in New Zealand saying mm -hmm. that they want some sort of capital set aside just to cover the Australian banks' activities in New Zealand. Mm. There's customer growth, there's some litigation issues potentially, and also some regulatory actions over some questions around marks around some anti-money laundering. So yep. it's really raising it to strengthen the balance sheet. It will take it to about 11 and a quarter percent once it's done. Uh, we'll increase the number of shares by about 3%. And of that $2.5 billion, uh, $2 billion has already been done through an institutional placement. That was done at a price of $25.32. This leaves about half a billion dollars for retail investors through a share purchase plan. And I guess what we're saying is that the big institutions, the big funds, they've been happy to take this sh uh, capital raising up to the tune of $2 billion. Yeah, they have. I mean, it's not, not a big amount, but yeah. that went pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, and so now it's a chance for retail investors to have a turn. Okay. So why don't you talk us through the actual share purchase plan? Yeah, so importantly, you don't have to participate. This is purely voluntary. Yeah. If you don't like it, don't have the cash, whatever the reasons are, have too much exposure to banks, then mm. this is something you, that, uh, you know, no obligation to, to be in. So it's something you either decide to uh, be part of or not. Mm. Uh, it's a maximum of $30,000. Mm. Uh, and then and that, that generally that'll start from a minimum of 1000 and you can participate in $1,000 or $2,000 or $3,000 mm. or $30,000. Mm. Okay. Importantly, the price, uh, it's a lower of $25.32. And that's the price that the institutions paid uh, for their $2 billion raising. Yep. And the average price of how Westpac shares trade in the last week before the closing date. Now, it's due mm. to close on the 2nd of December. Uh, and if so, if Westpac shares fall between now and the, se and the 2nd of December and go below $25.32, mm. you'll actually pay that price less a 2% discount. So it means you're pretty insulated if you participate now in terms mm. of any price movement. Yeah. You won't pay more than $25.32. You could pay quite a little bit less yeah. if Westpac shares come under pressure. And I guess if they go up, then... You'll still pay $25.32. So Good point. you are actually uh, protected there. Yep. The offer opens on the 12th of November. It's due to close on the 2nd of December. You'll get the shares on the 11th of December. Importantly, it's only $500 million mm. uh, and Westpac um, may scale back applications. Now, what that means if you bid for $30,000 and there's lots and lots of people put for, who want to participate, yep. you may end up, for example, of $10,000 and mm. you'll get a refund. Mm. Uh, so they said it's only $500 million. They do have a discretion to take on more, so we'll have to see how that plays out. But often when these things are, you know, are going amongst a lot of shareholders, we do get a scale back. So that's just something to be mm. a little mindful of. And one last point, Peter, is that uh, Westpac's due to pay a dividend in early December. That's 80 cents per share. These new shares won't qualify for that dividend. Yeah, and some people have never done this before. You have to put your money in first, and then you get a rebate if, for example, you ask for 30 and you only get 10. Yeah, and that's the downside of a share purchase plan. Yeah. You put the money on, they get the money for a little while, and you've got to wait till they get it back to you. That generally it happens pretty quickly, but uh, you won't actually know till uh, after the 2nd of December how many shares you'll get. Okay, what's the outlook for Westpac? Well, Westpac, uh, like a lot of the other major banks, has come out with a pretty subdued outlook. In fact, their outlook that, that, was that they gave in, the, uh, in their announcement uh, for their annual results was perhaps a little bit weaker than I think many had in the market had expected. So mm -hmm. let's just go through some of the things that they said. They expect fairly flat lending balance. In other words, their, their assets won't actually grow. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, that means there's no volume growth. That's the first thing. There's still pressure on, on the net interest margin. That's the difference between what they rate they get when they lend money versus what they pay for deposits yep. uh, and that margin is essentially their, their profit margin so that's still under a bit of pressure and so-called non-interest income from fees is still also under pressure so there's not much sort of income growth. Mm. Uh, expense growth is still expected to be around one percent now that still sounds like growth but they've got a lot of ongoing risk and 
and compliance spending and also got uh, you know, a lot of work going to regulatory actions. So despite all this and despite the productivity initiatives, costs are still expected to go up a fraction. Mm. Uh, and there's still uncertainty about some regulatory issues. So one, I mentioned the capital issue, what's Reserve Bank of New Zealand going to do in terms of their New Zealand subsidiary, but also some regulatory action around. So they've got class actions. They've also got some actions with ASIC. They've also got uh, issues around some potentially anti-money laundering. So a fairly subdued outlook from coming from management. Yeah. And, and we also have heard that all the banks have had a remediation issue. And that's basically remedying anything that's coming out of the Royal Commission and ultimately, that's a cost to the bank as well. Yeah, we actually don't know what that's going to be. That's, they're treating that sort of as, yeah. as an abnormal cost, mm. abnormal cost. Uh, but those costs have been building. And of course, they are eating into profits and their ability to pay dividends. So the actual cost of paying back the things, the sins of the past yeah. uh, are still moving in the wrong direction. So there's a little more confidence that they're getting to the bottom of these issues. Mm. But uh, I think as we've found out with these things, once they start, you open a can of worms it's very hard actually to close the lid back down. Yeah. So that's also a potential negative. Those worms don't like the lid being closed on them. Uh, Paul, finally, finally, the brokers. Yeah, what the brokers saying? are also a bit negative. I mean, they're not sort of crying out and saying Westpac's a big, a big sell, but they're not actually a lot of people saying out there Westpac's a buy either. Mm. They're seeing the whole banking sector as being still pretty subdued and pressures there. Uh, Re Westpac did cut its dividend in its annual profit announcements back to 160 cents, or effectively 80 cents for the first uh, part of the final part of the year. And I think the market now expects 160 cents to be about the dividend next year. And so the rebasing of that is probably a positive. That's going to give mean that these shares on a, at a price of $25.32 will still yield 6.32%, plus Frankie. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> still makes them pretty attractive. But you know, I think while the dividend of 160 cents for next year looks okay, there's a little bit of uncertainty with some of the analysts about the sort of outer years uh, as to what that dividend could be yeah, well, so. Unless the economy grows strongly and borrowing starts picking up, it's going to be hard for them to make money and therefore the dividend could be under pressure some years out. Yeah. That's Switzer Investing Insights brought to you by NAB Trade. Thanks for joining us.